Wells Tech is on the air. This is Martin Spriggs, and uh, we're at episode 407, and we're on Tuesday, August 25th, 2015, show about technology ministry, where those two intersect, and I'm joined, as usual, by my pal, Sally Draper. Hey, Sally. Good afternoon, Martin Spriggs, and welcome to a show about where technology and ministry intersect, and especially where they intersect with imagery. We're doing a special that's, series these that's days. That's the intersection we're on these days. Uh, <laughs> where uh, where uh, photo photography and ministry meet. Um, so we've been there talking about uh, this little abbreviated summer series, Imagine That. So we're looking at uh, all kinds of the, uh, the, the different dimensions of, of photographs. We started talking about uh, stock photography. Then we talked about taking your own photos uh, last week, we talked about uh, manipulating, editing those photos. And now we're taking last week a little step further. Now you've got those photos the way you want them. What can you do with them, right? That's right. This is fun stuff for me. I really like it when we get creative with our, our photography or our stock images, you know, to support perhaps a ministry theme, uh, a sermon series or something like that, some promotional materials um, that you're putting together, or to just be part of the social conversation these days, Martin, because oftentimes graphics or imagery are used um, for complete communication with folks by, you know, doing some text overlays or, or creative filtering or a combination of, of the above. Um, yep. People are communicating with it. This, these are these, we're working toward these gratifying moments where we've taken some raw stuff and uh, repurposed it and, and made it into something. I had one of those light bulb moments or the people I was talking to had one of those light bulb moments I was doing some on-site final web training and I got to the pick monkey section and <laughs> uh, showed them how easy it was to take a photo that was just not the right size not the right cropping you know didn't have any text or anything I mean they they, they didn't know how to do it and mm -hmm. uh, throw it into a tool like pick monkey and there are other tools like it uh, and and come out the other end with a useful image that could be used uh, on a web page in a newsletter whatever, and that's kind of where we're headed today, is uh, being able to know what the right tools are and just kind of know what the possibilities are. It's not uh, that you're kind of stuck with, uh, with an image just the way it came out of the camera, but uh, you can put images together, you can overlay with text, there's lots of things that you can do with it to fit the purpose that you want. And yeah, I've been around for quite a while, Martin, trying to do all kinds of different, especially training programs and, and have imagery to support it. And I'm the first to admit that those skills don't come naturally to me. So I'm really thankful for the kind of tools that are out there that make me look good because it's not hard to do with some of the tools we're going to um, show today. Um, and it does give you a professional look to it. Interestingly, we heard from a couple of our regular um, correspondents out there in the in the real world of ministry, a couple of our favorite pastors. First up, we heard um, from Pastor Rob Gunther, and he had a very timely article to share, um, a timely article that now has an advertisement overlaying it. <laughs> Give me a second and I'll get rid of that. Very timely advertising they have there. Um, anyway, it's called Making Great Worship Graphics on the Cheap. And uh, this is a, a Methodist minister down south somewhere, but a good blog that he follows just to get ideas and spark um, different ideas. And this guy does a lot of different um, image over uh, image with text overlays and things like that to support some of his worship graphic needs. And so he talks through um, different tools to use, including some of the ones that we're going to we're going to show on today's episode. But um, perhaps a good blog post just to kind of spark some ideas for you um, yep. as to how he uses it. Yeah, I think that's a a really important point. You have up oh, there went my lights again, Sally. I've been too. <laughs> You're in the dark today. I'm in the dark. So I'm back. Um, <laughs> I like these kind of articles. 
not necessarily because they're super instructional, because everybody's situation is a little bit different. Uh, but they are, they show these examples. Maybe they spark some creative juices and give you an idea of what the possibilities are. And uh, with worship graphics, what somebody else is doing, not that you have to use what they're doing, but you have an opportunity to look at what they've done and say, hey, maybe I could go this direction or, you know, go that direction. Big images, big text. You know, this is not uh, kind of PowerPoint 101 kind of stuff. It's, uh, it's a different style. So uh, it's helpful to kind of see what's, what other people are doing. And one more thing that was shared with us, I don't have the link up on, in my bajillion links that I have opened, but an art, uh, a link to a blog that Pastor Emil Burgess shared. And it's very similar to what Pastor Gunther shared. They're, they must be following our, our podcast uh, series and they had some timely stuff for us. Um, so another example blog where um, the person who writes it shares similar types of graphics and things. So thanks guys for those links. We probably should jump into to doing Let's some of Let's talk about some of the online. cool tools, huh? And guess where we're going to start? We're going to start with my oh, favorite, <laughs> Pig Monkey. Yeah, Pig Monkey. because last week uh, we didn't really talk about making collages. And I think that's one way um, to communicate by mashing up multiple pictures. So I'm actually in the Pig Monkey Collage Maker. And I have some sample photos, kind of a school theme, available to me over on the side. So you can upload your own photos. And it's real simple screen. to just... Oh, thank you very much. You were doing I'm a great trying. job at describing it, but yeah. for those that are watching at home, it'd be nice to see it too. So you can just grab the images that are over on the um, left-hand side of the screen, upload your own if you have them, and drag them into the collage maker. They give you different layouts, um, again, using the the icons on the left to switch to different layouts. So if you were interested in three images in a row, for instance, you could easily switch to that. Um, and they give you some extra um, complementary swatches and things. So you might, you know, just use some colors or, or different swatches and things in some of your spots. So lots of tools that come along for the ride. But the beauty of um, PicMonkey is that you can unlock the dimensions so that you can resize your your images to be whatever um, dimensions you want them to be by just dragging the areas um, the side areas of it um, you can also take away components of a collage by just xing the box that existed there and then amazingly you can expand your collages you guys ready to be amazed by taking images and dropping them along borders of other images so you're not tied down to pig monkeys layouts that they provide for you but you can add whatever um, types of layouts you want by just dragging and dropping even the internal edges of the various um, areas of the collage to different places different widths and heights and things like that it's amazing to me sally that they're able to do this within the context of a web browser um, that this whole visually satisfying, visually rich environment exists right on the web and for free. Um, it's very intuitive, I've found, and very um, easy for somebody just getting started, which is kind of the, the one of the requirements of some of the tools we're putting in this, uh, imagine, this in imagine That series is it really it can't be daunting. It needs to be super easy, needs to fit cleanly in a workflow. So you're getting pictures in, you're figuring out what to do with them, where they're supposed to go, and then you get the job done. If you have to spend hours and hours on this, we're just not, don't have time to do that. So a lot of these tools are just, you know, in and out, you know, drag and drop, just like you're doing. Uh, just a perfect tool for that. Um, that's very true, Martin. And, and at the same time, you're grinning big pig monkey grins yeah. while you're doing you it. Faster, um, right? Makes you happy. It makes you That's warm right. inside. <laughs> the last option available in the collage maker allows you to control the spacing between images. So the amount of the, the border around the different sections of the collage. You can even round 
corners all the way down to circular almost you if you want to change the background with color that. to match I'm whatever you know, background you're working with yeah that's right there's even a little eyedropper icon where you can pick up a color from the image or there's the um, hexadecimal representations so you can actually match to a particular hex code that you might be aware of if you don't know what hex codes are you better rewind folks because we talked about that in last week's show when you're happy with your collage you can go right into edit mode um, by opening from the collage the regular PicMonkey editor and one thing we didn't show in edit mode is the text overlay so while you're in edit mode you can click a button to say add text you can type in perhaps a favorite Bible verse or um, a back to school message or whatever it might be for your image and then that text can be moved around on the page placed in an open area like a, a um, allowed in my collage it can be resized and it can be um, changed to different fonts and they give you a lot of great fonts there um, to, to choose from and um, just like other components of PicMonkey you can also pick up colors and things from the image for your text coloring so I've added title, um, the title back to school. And if I highlight all that text, I can click here in this sidebar area and pick up a color from my image for that text. And now I have a really nice um, collage of imagery with some text overlay that would be wonderful perhaps to share um, in social media or on my website or in a newsletter or whatever my needs are. Very nice. So that's cool. a little that's... bit about what, yeah, PicMonkey can do for you. Okay, cool. What's the next tool, Sally? I can hardly <laughs> wait. You can't really top PicMonkey, but there's got to be some others. Well, there's two others that I want to make mention of. The first one is called Canva, C-A-N-V-A.com. And Canva allows you to do more desktop publishing kind of things. So um, they have different formats. For instance, if you're looking to do imagery that's a Facebook post size, you can select that. And once you select a particular format, then you, they give you just almost countless layouts that fit that format well. They show on the left side of the screen and you can just scroll down and view lots more. My screen is still loading and when you see one you like you can click on it to bring it in and then you could replace the imagery and the text that's here just by clicking on different areas you can upload your own imagery um, and it just gives you that really professional look like they've decided on the best fonts and um, placement and sizes and and graphic elements to go along with whatever um, you want now some of their imagery and things is um, what would you call that? I don't know what that overlay thing is called. I'm drawing a blank. Uh, watermarked is what I'm thinking right. of. And it does cost money, typically about a dollar an image for some of the professional imagery that they include. Some of it's free and it's marked free, but others cost money. But you're not required to use the imagery they you know, provided for you. You can upload your own. So you just go to the upload area probably have some in my upload area even and pick your own imagery and um, perhaps you would move it to the back so that the text shows up completely on top of it so even if things are pay far in the um, Canva world you can just replace their pay far imagery and turn it into a free graphic and then you just download it and you can make use of it on whatever way that you need it for the web, for social media, for sermon imagery, whatever it might be. Really easy to do. Yep, and this is a newer tool. It hasn't been uh, around as, as long as some of the other ones, but uh, they, they've done a nice job as well. So a little bit different feature set, but I think equally as easy to use. Mm -hmm. And then one more that I wanna mention real quickly is a site called PictoChart. It has a little funny spelling, P-I-K, T-O chart, C-H-A-R-T dot com. And on PictoChart, they have different layouts that are more infographic central. So infographics, reports, posters, and even some presentations where you can save your imagery in four by three kind of standard presentation size. And once you choose a particular style, then they give you examples um, to go from. So you can start with a completely blank 
infographic layout or you can start with one of their examples. The thing that gets me excited about um, PictoChart, let's see if I can click on this to click create, is um, that they also have built in some ways to graphically turn data into presentable things. So if you click on a particular block, you can add things like, um, I want to say maybe it's under tools, um, <coughs> like charts and maps and all kinds of things like that, where it actually has like the spreadsheet behind it that's driving it. And you can just put in your actual amount, you know, titles and, and, um, numeric data. They have lots of different layouts to pick from. And then once you um, click insert to chart, it adds particular data elements to your graphic layout. So that's pretty cool in terms of building like an infographic. And basically you have kind of infinite amounts of these blocks that you can add. So you can make it as long as you need to. You guys have seen lots of infographics out there that are super long. Here's an example of one that I created for a class I took last semester. And um, I used PictoChart to do it. And each place where you see the, the change of color, the pink to the tan background, those are different blocks. And then in each block, I've brought in different um, graphical elements. You can combine those with text, um, use different fonts and coloring and uh, created this kind of long infographic that explains something about educational technology. So I did that using PictoChart. Um, you know, there's a learning curve to each of these tools, but none of them are overwhelming. Um, I'm really pleased with what I can do with PictoChart and Canva and PicMonkey. They all kind of serve different purposes for me, but when I have the need, it's nice to have them in my tool belt and be able to pull them out and use them to create different types of graphics. Right, and they, they each kind of fill a niche, fill a need. Exactly. Uh, so it's good to know which tools you have at your disposal. And the good news is that for the most part, these are free tools. So you can uh, mm -hmm. pick the tires, play around with it, and then if uh, one meets a need, then go ahead and use it. It's not really going to cost you anything other than the investment, like you mentioned, you know, of time. And it's not a, a total no-brainer exercise, but uh, if you put in uh, you know, a certain amount of time, you're going to get real comfortable with it, and you're going to be really efficient at some point. You know, Martin, we shouldn't ignore the mobile side of things. And I will say that I know at least Canva has a mobile app where you can access your, your Canva account, the graphics you've created already, or you can make your own um, using their tools on your mobile device. Uh, one that I'm a big fan of on the Bible side of things is the Uversion uh, image capabilities. So you can actually tap on different Bible verses in your Uversion mobile app and turn them into um, imagery that you can share easily um, with different connected social media accounts and things like that. So I make use of this one quite often and they give you a good set of stock imagery that you can use behind the text, the Bible text, but you can also upload your own. So it kind of is unlimited what you can create with it as well. They give you different fonts and other um, ways to edit the layout and things like that. And I found it to be a, a really handy tool to have in my pocket on my mobile device. Yeah, the, I don't remember if this was one of my picks or whether we presented mm -hmm. as a ministry resource a while back. Now, back then, you couldn't upload your own. You were kind of stuck with what they provided, but now you can. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it does make it complete nice. Complete typographic control. So if you've got a darker image, uh, you maybe want to put white text over the top or vice versa just so that uh, you know that comes through. And uh, they make it super easy to put together and then really super easy to share to Facebook, or Twitter, or wherever. So. Yep, I've enjoyed using their tools. All right. Speaking of sharing, I see a familiar social network on our rundown here, Sally. <laughs> well, probably just a good thing to mention that um, I've talked about Facebook and Twitter and sharing, but probably one of the most popular sites to share on is Pinterest. And this is um, what a lot of people are doing. And it's a great way to let your light shine or to, to let your ministry light shine, as it were. Um, perhaps your church may have a Pinterest page where you could share these kind of um, inspirational graphics um, with your followers. So just an idea for you to to uh, I think Pastor Gunther even said maybe a manly use for Pinterest in the ministry <laughs> setting. So a like little inspiration for you out there. Yeah. 
Very nice. Uh, now we've talked about some of these tools, uh, maybe some of the applications for them. Uh, but at some point, uh, everybody maybe wants to put these down on paper. So it's not always just digital for a website or a social network. But you may have need to put uh, put a print down or or make a book. Uh, a lot of uh, tools are available out there right now that will allow you to take these collages, these groups of pictures, images, text even, and publish you know, into a book. And uh, a lot of these services are super easy to use. Even uh, your local Walgreens, you can, uh, I know we've done this, you just send, a, you go online to their service, you upload your pictures, and you can have your printed uh, photos, you know, within a couple hours. It's, uh, it's uh, really super easy with tools like the Walgreens online app or uh, so, uh, tools like Snapfish. Uh, you hear a lot about those kinds of tools that will allow you to not just print photos, but do all kinds of things with your photos, different kinds of formats, framings, those kinds of things. Yeah, and um, photo books are real popular. I know I did one uh, when my father passed away. That was kind of a family gift after he had passed away with all of our pictures with him, you know, combined into a book. A great memory. In a ministry setting, Martin, I'm thinking of schools, maybe small schools that aren't able to produce their own yearbooks. Um, someone creative could pull together the photos from the year, put them in some kind of a photo book of this sort. And, you know, maybe it would cost $15 per person or something to get a copy of the book. But I think you'd get quantity discounts the more that you had ordered and, and you'd end up with a, a nice product and, you know, not unreasonable to do as a do-it-yourself kind of project with the yeah. photos you have I'm available. I'm thinking uh, my wife uh, teaches art, uh, maybe their oh. portfolio for the year you know, could be put in, awesome. in these kinds of books, fairly low cost, and they've got uh, something very <laughs> nice to, to take home, put on the coffee table, that kind of thing. There are all kinds of other tools that do this. A tool that I've talked about a lot, Lightroom, allows you to do this. They use a third party called Blurb. Blurb.com. Uh, they have a, a nice online tool to do that. Uh, iPhoto on the on a Mac or on the Apple platform does that. Uh, Flickr, uh, you can create uh, those kinds of things as well. Uh, they use uh, they may use Snapfish. I don't remember uh, which which third party they use, but you can uh, you can do that there and, and uh, come up with a very nice product. Mm-hmm. And one more thing that I teach my students when I teach image editing for MLC occasionally is that you can also create um, photo slideshows or turn your photos maybe into a video format um, for embedding on a website or something. We would always do this at the end of Vacation Bible School. We'd have just a, a wonderful group of pictures that we had taken for Vacation Bible School that just showed so much happiness that happened all week long and we'd throw them into a slideshow creator tool and yep. there's a lot of those out there Martin. Yep, Slidely is uh, one that's really popular. I haven't used that myself, but uh, a lot of people have a lot of flexibility. Uh, you put your, your images up there, and uh, I think it will take images and video. It will collage them together and uh, make a nice presentation of them. You can see lots of examples on their site just to, to inspire you a little bit. Very shareable, both on... Um, both on the web and also on mobile applications. Uh, another one is called Smilebox. Um, so you upload your photos and very similar to um, Animoto, one that we've talked about as well, where mm -hmm. you upload your your images. You can uh, you can pick a style or a theme. Is it a birthday? Is it uh, summer travel? Is it a wedding? Uh, is it uh, family? Uh, something else? You have options of uh, kind of using your creative juices there. And also uh, with a tool like Animoto, not only can you upload uh, images and video, but you can upload uh, audio files. So you put it to music mm -hmm. and uh, that always, uh, so in fact, they, uh, they kind of give you a little bit of a walkthrough. You pick a style and a song, you customize your stuff, you can throw text on there. And then you finally you hit the produce button and, and out it pops. Um, and most of these do a much better job than they used to about portability so that they'll 
they'll push it out, not in just their proprietary format that you have to use their viewer online to view, but they'll do it in some kind of video format or allow you to upload it to YouTube or something like that. Uh, makes a big difference in what you can actually do with it, put it on your website, those kinds of things. Yeah, very fun tool to use. Um, one thing that is a little sad about Animoto, they used to offer free accounts for educators and you got 50 licenses to be able to use it with your students for free. Kind of, I, I think for free you normally can create like a 30 second video, but um, with the educator license you could go up to 10 minutes or so. Um, I think they've begun to charge for that kind of licensing. It seems like it's a reasonable charge and I remember reading the article but I don't know the exact numbers in front of me right now but um, still a very worthy tool to use in a school setting. It, it does um, give the kids a way to be creative with, with research they're doing or, or different um, projects they're working on. Okay. So uh, we will have some other tools that we didn't talk about uh, on uh, online here in the show notes. Uh, so make sure you check that out. But uh, that'll give you a good start in some of the possibilities. So you've got some some editing tools, some collaging tools, some things that you could do with uh, the physical photos that you could print uh, and uh, online slideshows. Just lots of applications for, for the photos that you have. Martin, we should probably make mention that along with our uh, summer series, we've also started a Wells Tech photo challenge. And mm -hmm. maybe I'll share my screen and you guys can see the progress we've made. I'm really, really excited about um, the donations to the, the group pool that we've received so far. So the concept is that once a month we'll release a challenge. Um, this month's challenge was outdoors and stained glass. And then Folks are encouraged to upload images that they're donating um, to this public domain album on Flickr. And so far, so good. We've gotten some really beautiful imagery. So these images are here. You can begin to make use of these for those um, projects like we were just describing as you have need to, to do imagery for different uh, events or or communication within your ministry setting. They're here for you to use um, completely copyright free. So um, definitely make use of the album, but also visit our website, uh, wellstech.wells.net uh, slash photo challenge. And we're here to announce that our September challenge is going to be school and Bible study related images. So if you have images yet to upload of outdoors and stained glass. You've got a few more days to do that for August. And then starting September 1st, we'll be asking you to upload school and Bible study images to the Wells Tech Photo Challenge. Yep. And what we'd like you to do is actually go out with your camera and take those photos. Don't just necessarily go back into the archives. You can certainly do that and we'll post, publish those because we want to share as many as possible. But the whole idea of a photo challenge is you know, here's an assignment. Here's how you get better. Uh, here are the subjects that we're all going to work on together. So I have a week yet. I haven't done mine yet, Sally, but I will. And uh, I think this is a, just a great way to get to become a better photographer is just uh, some subject that you that you need to take. And all of these are going to be appropriate for ministry applications. So uh, school and Bible study is September, but you still have time in here in August. So it's fun. Yeah. I like it. And and there's prizes involved. I don't have it all right in front of me, Martin. I got to do a better job of updating my mind map, but we would really like to reward you if you manage to submit all 12 months starting with August. So you still have about a week to get those August images uploaded. And if you follow the challenge through the entire series of 12 months, uh, you're going to be in a drawing for a really awesome photography related prize. And there'll be other drawings as well. Just just contribute and we'll have you in drawings for, for that and some creativity challenges and things like that. So we have lots of tricks up our sleeve and it's all um, to your benefit if you join the Wells Tech Photo Challenge. All right. So that again is wellstech.wells.net slash photo challenge. Take you right to the form where you can upload your images. And you can upload as many as you want. You can do it only three at a time, but yeah, feel free to have multiple submissions if you like. Absolutely. We'll take Sally, them all. we're going to wrap up this series next week, this Imagine That series. And uh, one of my favorite topics, image storage and organization. You take all these pictures, you got to be able to find them. And uh, <laughs> we, we 
you may recall that we talked about this many, many moons ago. Uh, I remember kind of your organizational system. Let's see if that's changed or not. So we will uh, we will uh, talk about that next week. How do you manage all these photos that you're taking and need to uh, to find at some point? So that's next week as we wrap up the series. I'll tip you off. I'm not a fan of change. So just so you know. Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> Picks of the week. Sally, what's your pick this week? Actually, I'm going to do a quick revisit of my pick from last week because yesterday I got mail from my friends at freeprints.com. Um, Freeprints was the app that I recommended last week, and it allows you to, to get up to 85 free prints per month of images, um, and all you do is pay for the shipping. So if you're willing to wait on them to be shipped to you and um, – pay for the shipping, which is reasonably priced, then you can get free prints. And this is four by six images. So I uploaded one of me and my sisters. I was on a recent trip and got to visit with them. If you get other sizes, then you have to pay for those. And I was very interested in what square photography would look like. I haven't before gotten prints of oh, Instagram so pictures. Cool. I like that. Isn't that neat? Yep. And so these are some that I actually created with the Bible app and did the text overlay of Bible verses on top of them. And I'm really excited about them. They're five by five and they cost 49 cents each to get a five by five print. So still very reasonably priced. Um, also in my package were a couple of little fun things really cool marketing. They sent me something that says, um, we want to deliver on time. So let us know when you receive this and we'll give you a free five by seven print. So I went out to their website, put in the code they gave me and they gave me a code that I can use to redeem for a free five by seven print. I'll Not just have to bad. pay the shipping on that. And then they sent me something from somewhere called my custom case. It's another product where they do um, you know, like photos on, mobile device cases so you can get a device case printed um, with your imagery on it and they sent yeah. me a $10 gift card for that I went and looked pricing is not cheap so $10 probably won't motivate me to buy a custom my case, daughter has one of those with my grandson's picture on it it's adorable oh fun so, yeah there you go okay so that that wasn't my pick of the week that was just a follow-up on last the week's pick, pick of the week that's so right pick that's okay. right. Um, my actual pick of the week has to do with someone who's doing really great um, graphic design work with imagery. And that's my friend Katie Clinard Ellison, who works with Time of Grace Ministry there in Milwaukee. And she was a Wells Tech Conference presenter. The title of her um, presentation was Take Your Social Media Ministry to the Next Level. And she shared with us her Prezi, her presentation that she used for that um, session. So I'm going to have a link to that in the show notes. But I just wanted to give you a little taste of what Time of Grace does. Um, they have an Instagram account and they regularly share these motivating type imagery um, with the text overlay, um, really well done. And in this case, they do some branding on it as well. So you can see all throughout their imagery, they have the Time of Grace logo included. So that's an idea for you if you wanted to kind of start this effort was maybe to include your branding um, on it as well. They also um, curate a Pinterest board or actually 18 Pinterest boards. They have a Pinterest account and they're constantly sharing those kind of inspirational images on the various boards. So they have a board called Inspiration, Scripture for Life, Dating and Marriage, um, Be Still, Pray Without Ceasing, Grace, all of these different boards um, that have this kind of inspirational imagery. So if you're looking for ideas of what you might do with your ministry, maybe visit um, the Time of Grace Pinterest board and check out some of their um, things that they're pinning and um, how they make use of Pinterest for that purpose. So just a, a follow up on what we're talking about today. I think Time of Grace does a really great job with it. And especially Katie, thank you for sharing your, your knowledge at Wells Tech Conference. I like it. Katie's mm -hmm. a very talented lady. Um, Definitely. And, uh, we, were, we were really blessed to have her at the conference. We've been blessed to have her on the show before talk about what she's doing there at Time of Grace. So um, thank you, Katie. Good pick. Uh, my pick, uh, let me do a quick uh, screen share here as well. This is a fairly new tool. 
um, from Microsoft. And um, you, everybody knows that uh, Microsoft makes PowerPoint, which is the, their presentation tool. This is kind of like the opposite end of the spectrum, but still in the presentation side of things. They made a tool called Sway. And uh, Sway is a way to create what they say on the website is create and share interactive reports, presentations, personal stories, and more. What makes this really kind of nifty is that uh, you can present, you can put this together, uh, and yeah, there is a little bit of a learning curve. You have to figure out, you know, where images can go and where text can go, but uh, they don't overwhelm you uh, like with all the options that you would have in a PowerPoint. So you're throwing in images, text, you're highlighting, bolding things. You can put embed uh, YouTube videos. Um, charts, graphics uh, of, of any type. And it works uh, similarly to some of the tools that we were looking at before, like Canva and, and Pictochart, where you have uh, the ability to throw all these in here. And with a click of a button, you can uh, apply different themes and design and then share them uh, in, uh, you know, in kind of neat ways because you have the ability to share both on the web but also on mobile devices. And the, the kind of the magic of all this is it looks beautiful on whatever platform. Uh, so when we're in an age where we have people um, viewing content both on computers and iPads and iPhones and tablets and so on and so forth, you really need to present content that is going to look nice on, on all of those platforms. So they've done some really nice stuff here. Uh, and I think from a ministry perspective, I would be interested in churches who might take advantage of this to, to, to do their newsletter or to do their annual report rather than that stodgy, you know, paper thing that's got a that's got a uh, staple in the upper left hand corner why not use some visually appealing uh, tools like this and put together on your report your, your uh, viewership might go up same with your newsletter uh, those of you that are watching here's just an example of uh, of how they've done it you can do it in a couple of different ways there's three different navigation schemes you can go left to right uh, top to bottom or kind of a paging mechanism this is a this is a scrolling one, more like an infographic. And you kind of see that there's built-in animations for some of their titles. There's call-outs. There's embedded maps. There's video that plays. Uh, just It's kind of like an ebook. And the, the neat part is it's very easy just to drag and drop content on here. Type in your stuff, your quotes, your, your videos. You can even embed Twitter or Facebook uh, feeds or posts. And uh, it all just comes together. And... Uh, you can click one button and, and change the whole style completely. So if you don't like the maybe contemporary theme that's been applied, you can do something more traditional. You can change the color scheme and then share it out. So the share button uh, allows you to grab a, a, a quick link or you can share it on Facebook, Twitter, Yammer, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Google Plus, uh, or share this. Uh, which lets you go to a lot of different uh, other services. There's even embed code. So once you're done, you could embed it on your website. So lots of different applications here. Totally free. Uh, so there's there's really no cost to it. Um, you do need a Microsoft account, which is, which is also free. Uh, once you have that, then away you go. These things are stored online. And uh, there's uh, some good tutorial videos out there. I'll include a link to that in the show notes as well. A whole series of, of people who have used the tool and uh, really done some amazing things with this. I'm really excited about where this is all headed because uh, this uh, kind of takes the drudgery out of you know putting together you know things that, that maybe aren't that uh, exciting in and of themselves like <laughs> reports and, and, uh, and uh, newsletters, those kinds of things. So Sway, S-W-A-Y.com. My pick of the week. That looks super fun, Martin. What if you want to print? I bet you could print them, huh? They probably have I, a print. They, I don't think so. I think this is really? you're in the digital world, period. Um, so if you hmm. need, if you have need to print, I think you're you're going to have to do that uh, on a, on a, in a separate format. So it's definitely okay. digital first. So cool. Okay. I'm looking forward to playing with it. Sounds All right, good. community feedback, shall we? 
Yes, we shall. I have a few things to share today, um, starting with um, some correspondence from, again, from our friend Rob Gunther. And actually, um, figured out yesterday was Rob's birthday. So a day late, but a belated shout out to Rob um, on his birthday. And what he did was he um, made his Kindle ebook free for the week in honor of his birthday. So if you don't yet own In Their Sandals by Pastor Rob Gunther of Kenai, Alaska, uh, you might want to hop on over there to the Kindle page. We'll have a link in the show notes and buy it with one click for zero dollars um, through this Friday. Um, that would be August 28th. So thanks, Rob, for your generosity and sharing uh, your ebook in that way. Um, he also sent us links to a couple of cool technology things that he saw this week. The first of which is the fact that Samsung has invented a I screen <laughs> for the back of trucks. And what it shows is the road ahead. So a camera mounted in the front of the truck is showing the drivers who can't see around this huge truck what's ahead of them um, in the opposite lanes and stuff. I thought that was really, really cool. Yeah. Um, save some people's Love lives, that. I'm guessing, with yeah. that kind of knowledge. And then the other thing he shared was a link to a Google Docs add-on called Ultra Docs Email Designer. The idea is that you can design responsive emails in Google Docs. And then um, they've built in some tracking using Google Sheets to keep up with how many get delivered and opened and all those kind of things. Almost a competitor for something like MailChimp, yeah. Yeah. but using your, um, your Drive account to make that happen. So if if you're a Google aficionado, you might want to check out this Google Docs add-on called Ultra Docs Email Designer. Um, from Matt Nodling, who was someone who attended Wells Tech Conference, we met him this summer at Wells Tech Conference, he shared in the Wells Google Schools group uh, this PDF document. It's called the Practical Ed Tech handbook. And it's from uh, Richard Byrne, who does the website freetechforteachers.com. And it covers things like uh, communication, texting with parents and students, email management, blog, blogging tools, web search strategies, digital citizenship for various age groups, um, video creation, audio recording and publishing, back channel and digital portfolios. So some really uh, timely topics as the school year is getting underway. Uh, really great things to consider as you're um, thinking about educational technology in the classroom. And so you might want to download this free um, PDF document and give it a quick read. Um, next up, we had some communication, and this was from Professor Paul Grubbs, who's at Martin Luther College. And Professor Grubbs actually wrote to me, he's a member of St. John's Church here in New Ulm, and said they were considering posting a uh, worship video on their website. And he was looking into the ramifications in terms of copyright. Um, wondering if it was better just to post the sermons or get into posting the full worship service. So um, we get these questions periodically, Martin, and it's always a good chance to go back and review uh, some of the resources that we've put together. And uh, my first words to him were, you know, I'm not a, a lawyer and I don't play one on television. You know, it's um, some or really podcast, complicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or on a podcast. There you go. And, uh, area that you want to be very careful about um, as you make decisions about what to post. So in that light, we've put together a page on the Wells Tech Wiki with a lot of uh, links to different resources, um, many of which link to the, the website Christian Copyright Solver, um, where they have a lot of uh, great resources that kind of talk you through things. Now, I think the people behind those fact sheets and information also have a licensing tool that they'd like you to subscribe to, you know, but they do um, share information about all the different licenses that are out there and stuff. Um, we also interviewed um, on the show, uh, and how long ago? Last February. So it's been a while ago. We interviewed Christine Lawfer, who's with Northwestern Publishing House and, and works through their copyright issues. And probably one of the best resources I've found is the NPH 
um, copyright FAQ page where they answer a lot of questions about the NPH materials, the hymns that are in the hymnal and the supplement and different things like that. So um, those were some resources I thought um, Paul might find useful and, and shared with him and thought we'd share it with the Wells Tech audience as well. Yep. Tough question. We get it a lot. Um, one of the first questions you'll ask is really not a copyright question, but a question of viewership. You know, what do your view, what will your viewers want to watch? Will they want to watch an entire ser service uh, from start to finish? Are they going to participate? Who's the video for? Is it for visitors? Then maybe not the whole service would be necessary. They, they really don't need to, to watch, uh, uh, you know, a thousand people run through the communion line, for instance. So you kind of have to think and pick uh, who your audience is. And then if you decide, yeah, this is an, it should be an online experience or an online worship experience for, for those people, then you go to these resources uh, because uh, the easiest way and uh, you know, maybe the, the way most congregations do it now is just the sermon. Uh, but if you want to do the whole service, then you're going to run into these copyright issues and these resources. And at the end of the day, basically, you're going to need another license beyond the uh, one license that net, let's say, that you might have or a lot of congregations have. You're going to need kind of an add-on module to cover uh, online distribution of that of that same content. So. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I'll just make mention there's a lively discussion going on over on the Wells Tech Listserv. Our friend Gail Potratz from Emmanuel in New London, Wisconsin, uh, wrote this, just this morning wondering what technology other schools and churches are using to lock and open church and school doors. So there's a whole um, industry behind uh, automatic door locks and and such things and controlling those electronically. And uh, Gail asked for answers on that. And I think so far at least four people have chimed in with information about systems they're using. And, and I'm guessing more conversation will happen around it. Just a, a demonstration of the wonderful Wells Tech Listserv community that's out there to help you if you have technology related questions. So if you aren't subscribed, you might want to do that and certainly check out the Listserv archives um, for the conversation about door locks if that's of interest to your ministry. Very and that's nice. what I got for community feedback. Beautiful. Um, as we mentioned uh, previously, we're going to close out this series. Imagine that next week. Um, we mentioned the, the photo challenge. I'm going to give you another challenge. Give us some feedback of any sort uh, on photography or otherwise tech and ministry topics, how you use photography on your website, some of the challenges maybe that you have in doing that, just send us an email, wellstech at wells.net. Let us know those things. Go to our website, wellstech.wells.net. Leave a comment on, on one of the shows. We'll pick that up. Go to one of the social networks. We're, we're uh, on all of those. Uh, just let us know what you're thinking. We would love to fill up our community feedback section, maybe even to the point where we'll dedicate a show a month or something just to just to answering community feedback type questions and raising some issues that are raised there. Uh, it would be really awesome if we could get to that point. So take advantage of the fact that this is an open discussion and we want you to be a part. Uh, Sally and I by ourselves are extremely boring. Uh, you probably <laughs> recognize that already. We would love to have you uh, make up more of the show than you do right now. So don't just lurk out there. You can, uh, if you want to stay anonymous, just let us know that. But uh, give us your feedback. We'd love to have that. Time to sign off, boring podcast partner of mine. That's right. Uh, I think we've said we bored them long enough. They've stuck with us to the end, and now it will come to a merciful close. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us. We will hope to talk uh, or see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.